Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and the purpose of this video is to open the eye, to really open the eyes of some of you people who are just discovering this market and, and many of you, if you've been watching me for a long time, you've seen a variety of part of this video before, not the whole thing, but I'm going to talk about DTCC today. And, but, but more importantly, I want to draw the big picture for some of you. This is important because a lot of you, a lot of people, I mean, I'm getting phone calls here in my hometown off the freaking hook right now that are just, Hey, which digital assets are you invested? And they're all coming at this. They're all looking at this the way most people are looking at it. Oh, I can make some money. This is a quick buck and uh, look at the returns on all this. And yes, that's a big deal. But I'm going to show you in this video how small-minded that is if you really take a step back and understand what this all is. This has everything to do with the 2008 financial crisis. It always has. I believe that, that a plan that was in the, work, in the works for probably decades was taken off the shelf and put in motion. Maybe the financial crisis spurred it on. I don't, I, that's what I'm assuming. I'm going to show you that. Okay, and I'm going to show you how all those players were involved then and they're involved now. Okay, so strap in. This is going to get interesting if you haven't seen it before. It's interesting even if you have. Okay, so so watch this. Um, the first thing I want to show you is you got XRP up 14% and I laugh. SEC lawsuit pending and it's, it's, it's at 44 cents. I think that is, it tells you all you need to know. Okay, look if you look at these uh, bitcoins sitting at thirty-eight thousand, um, you got all, all kinds of things. I wanted to show you this because this is fascinating to me. I want you to look at the one-year returns on these things. Bitcoin two hundred ninety-one percent, Ethereum seven hundred and fourteen percent, XRP sixty percent, um, Polkadot is minus ninety-three, Cardano is plus seven hundred and fifty-eight percent. Litecoin 113, Chainlink 823, Binance Coin 200. Look at this one, Dogcoin. That's hilarious. That right there, that number right there, that's 1,624% makes me more bullish on XRP than anything that you could ever do because I know what Dogcoin is or Dogecoin and I know what XRP is. And if Dogecoin on a joke with a tweet is up 1,600 and something percent, what is XRP once the law or beyond the lawsuit and it changes the world and it does what I'm going to show you in this video? That's the question you need to ask yourself because it, it, it this is eminently on like, on like Donkey Kong. And I'm telling you, golly, I, I'm going to beat my, I'm going to beat my table because you need to have the table beaten every once in a while here to understand just how emphatic I am on this, that everything, I mean, everything, not just having to do with XRP, everything in the world of finance is about to completely be turned on its head. And 99% of the population doesn't even know it's coming. They're starting to know, they're starting to, to get a gut feeling that something is going on and they're, and their first heads up is these numbers you're looking at right here. Okay, moving along, here we go. The first thing I wanna show you is a tweet that I did today. This is a clip that I want you to hear. This is a clip from Robbie Michnick. I don't know if he's still at BlackRock, but he left Ripple to go to BlackRock and run their digital asset division back in, I think, 2017. I want you to listen to what he says. This is an older clip of, um, of him speaking um, with somebody else at BlackRock. It's still custody, but it's how do you build bulletproof custody solutions that are institutional grade that large FIs can actually get comfortable FIs with? FIs, financial institutions. Financial institutions. So the difference is the threshold is way higher. 
in the latter case, because I know that I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and find out that my Apple shares got hacked and went missing from the DTCC. And the industry, what is the DTCC? That is basically the depository that keeps track of who owns what shares in the U.S. market. And that's the threshold that the crypto and blockchain industry is going to need to get to, whether that's for traditional crypto or for tokenized financial assets. Okay. Okay. I want, still you, I want you to understand what he just said. Basically, when you when you go, and this this is the core of our financial system, when you go to Charles Schwab or, or a place like that, and you go online in your brokerage account and you buy a stock, let's say you buy Apple stock, you don't worry about who is holding that physical certificate of Apple stock. You trust because of, because of the traditional custodians and DTCC is in the mix of making sure that that is done in the right way and organized. That you, you don't worry about that stock certificate. You know you own that share of Apple stock that you just bought. That is what digital assets has have not had. And what he just said is the second that that's where this is going. Once that is taken care of, it's over. And and it's not just for stocks. The to, to, in other words, once the token tokenization of stocks, they're put on the blockchain, and there's a digital asset custody. But not just stocks, bonds, everything else, tokenizing everything. Once that is solved, and people can go online and they can buy, like for instance, on Coinbase right now. I can go on, I can go to Coinbase right now and I can buy XR well not I can't buy XRP right now I can buy XLM. Well, there's a problem. Once I buy that XLM, I don't have I don't have very, I don't have 100% confident choices of the storage of that XLM. I've got the my options right now or I can I can send it off of their platform into my Ledger Nano S. Okay, that's my hard wallet. I can store it myself so that I control the keys, or I can put, leave it on Coinbase and be su somewhat susceptible to Coinbase being hacked and my XLM being stolen. What he's saying in this clip from 2017 is that that's what they were all working on. They already have it worked out now, folks, but they haven't gone live with it. PolySign behind the scenes is the most it's the most secretive cust back in custody solution that there is. It was that we were told it was going live in 2020. It probably did. The truth is it's probably in place now, but we haven't seen it. Maybe we won't ever see a formal announcement that anything is being done. Maybe it'll just be running in the background. But what what you're seeing now, if you look down, um, and I, I said I said here the gains so far are nothing. We've basically got a one point something trillion dollar market. When you start talking about what's coming with all of this, this is what we're talking about: Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, BlackRock, these big boys. They are going to be announcing custody, and and Goldman. I'm trying to remember the exact wording they used. They said that. The cus their custody solution would be evident soon. They've already got it worked out, but they've never opened this up to you and me where just individuals could go and buy crypto and then we don't worry about it the same way we don't worry about our stocks. But we've got this on the horizon. We've got PolySun. Now, to show you, this was a reply from this guy M or, or LS. Um, he's giving a part of the conversation with Robbie Michnick um, as well. This is the question to Robbie Michnick. I, I think it was in the same interview. So speaking of enterprise blockchain, now um, now we can start using the buzzwords for those who do follow it. Before you came to BlackRock, you worked at Ripple, and they have a token or a crypto asset called XRP. You also wrote a paper on the theoretical valuation or the theory to value crypto assets, which is a much debated topic. So what brought you back to block what brought you to BlackRock? So I consider myself a part of that. And my philosophy has always been that rather than rip out the existing financial institutions, that the best way for blockchain to get adopted was to be embraced by them. And the slower competitors that that don't adopt will be replaced. There you go. Okay, now so this was a this was a, a like a message board post or something that was sent to me, or that was in there in that reply. 
this is someone saying this. The DTCC is one of the largest clearinghouses of securities and derivatives in the United States, processing 1.6 quadrillion worth of transactions last year. It is also one of the largest clearinghouses in the world. After reading through what the DTCC is doing, I'm starting to believe uh, we're going to the moon this year. This is somebody writing in, in, I believe, 2020. The opening of the floodgates is upon us. So much going on here with XRP preparing to go into the derivatives market. There has to be regulatory clarity before DTCC goes live on February 24, 2020. Cryptos are going to go nuts and XRP will be one of the best performing. Okay, so this is one of the articles that they've got in that post that you may not, many of you may not remember. Welcome advisor Donald Donahue to Ripple Labs, June 1st, 2015. Ripple Labs is pleased to announce that Donald Donahue, president and CEO of Miranda Partners LLC and the former CEO of the DTCC has joined us as an advisor to the company. All right. Then you have this. Watch this little clip. This is uh, the CFO of the DTCC in two, at the end of 2018. We have made quite a bit of progress in advancing um, a, um, a distributed ledger concept for what we call our trade information warehouse. And our trade information warehouse um, is an application that supports lifecycle management and asset servicing for credit derivative transactions, which approximate about $11 trillion around the world. And we've been working with um, IBM, Axoni, um, and R3 on this application for about 18 months. And about a week ago, we announced that we're going into user acceptance testing with 15 global banks. Um, so um, we're really pleased with what we've seen. Um, we've learned a lot along the way, um, but we're actually going to be launching this application in production in 2019. Okay, so yeah. there's that. And then there was this one. Um, this is a guy, his name is Robert Palatnik, DTCC Managing Director and Chief Technology Architect. This is September 2018. Before I show you this, let me show you his resume, and we'll get to this too. Um, he's now with DT, DTCC. He's also Chairman of the Board of Directors at Hyperledger. You'll remember that in a minute when I show you. Listen to what he says, and I want you to remember... What was at the core of the financial crisis? You'll remember the word. You'll know it when he says it. And inside of DTCC, we're pursuing two different cases. Where He's pursuing two different cases for blockchain distributed ledger technology. Sharing about transactions in near real time, repurchase agreements in U.S. Treasuries, uh, and credit default swaps. Ding, and ding, 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 ding. Credit default swaps were at the very core center of the financial crisis. Credit default swaps are most widely used uh, are the most widely used type of credit derivative. Ding 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 ding, and a powerful force in the world markets. The first CDS contract was introduced by J.P. Morgan in 1997. And by 2012, despite a negative reputation in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis, the value of the market was estimated at $24.8 trillion. All right. And you'll remember the lady, I'm drawing a blank on her name, but the lady that created credit default swaps was dispatched after the financial crisis by J.P. Morgan to go form Digital Asset Holdings. I'm drawing a blank on her name. I'll think of it in a second. But anyway, I've shown her on this channel before. That also is not a coincidence. She was literally the creator of the credit default swap. Now, let's go back to his, um, the guy from the DTCC, his resume. He's the chairman of the board of directors of Hyperledger. Well, what is Hyperledger? Well, we've shown, uh, we've shown Hyperledger, we've talked about Hyperledger on this a lot. Remember the Everest document? Um, this is ground zero for what's happening with Ripple and XRP. 20, uh, 2017 to 2020, Ripple becomes the standard ILP. 2020 to 2025, blockchain solutions for capital markets, da da da. Um, ILP Java becomes the interoperability standard for Hyperledger Foundation products. And as you go down here, you'll see Hyperledger, and then you will see BNY Mellon. You'll see um, where is it? 
it's on here DTCC notice R3 notice digital asset which is where um, it's Blythe Masters is her name she she created credit the default swap she left JP Morgan after the financial crisis after the fires were put out I think and went and started digital asset which is right in the middle of all of this too okay notice JP Morgan um, now you'll also know one thing I've noticed from covering a lot of things is there's two companies that are kind of running in the background that are that are some of the puppet they're, they're like the Wizard of Oz they're the behind the curtain but you don't they don't publicly put their name out there a lot and that would be Goldman Sachs and BlackRock okay now Let's look at, I want to show you this. How does this all relate to the financial crisis and now? Well, what you're looking at right here is BNY Mellon. Okay, this is the BNY Mellon Wikipedia page. In October of 2008, there were, two, to my knowledge, there were two core financial institutions that were the trusted institutions that helped the U.S. government during the, the financial crisis. They were considered companies that financial companies that were systemically safe, and, and they were trusted for that reason. One of them was BNY Mellon, and I'm going to show you the other next. In 2008, a U.S. Treasury named B, uh, the U.S. Treasury named BNY Mellon the master custodian of the of the TARP bailout fund during the financial crisis of 2007 to 2010. Where do you find, what are the executives you find that are on the, the um, on, that are on the documents for the formation of PolySign, which is the most secret, the, the most secret custodian, digital asset custodian that's been working behind the scenes to create digital asset custody to solve this problem? That would be BNY Mellon executives. There's two of them that I know of that are on that documentation. Then, who else? It was BlackRock. This is the BlackRock wiki. Okay, BlackRock, where Rab Robbie Michnick left Ripple and went to BlackRock. And by the way, just as a refresher on PolySign's, um, the guys that formed PolySign, there's at least three to five people, including David Schwartz and Arthur Brito, the creators of the XRP Ledger, that formed PolySign, that digital asset custody solution. Okay, this is BlackRock's wiki. The U.S. government contracted with BlackRock to help resolve the fallout of the financial meltdown of 2008. According to Vanity Fair, the financial establishment in Washington and on Wall Street believed BlackRock was the best choice for the job. The Federal Reserve allowed BlackRock to superintend the $130 billion debt settlement of Bear Stearns and American International Group. One thing that I've always thought was interesting is just by pure coincidence, in April of 2009, BlackRock acquired R3 Capital Management. The reason that always struck me is because in 2000, while they were helping with this financial um, crisis, there just happened to be a company that they acquired called R3 Capital Management, and it just... R3 has always popped up right here in the middle of all this digital asset talk. That's always, I'm sure that's a pure coincidence though. And then we have this, Esoteric XRP. I've always, I, kept, I keep showing you this, this Kendra Hill that disappeared from social media back in the day. But it's always fascinated me the core of the things that she said. Um, Esoteric XRP, we, we covered this earlier in the week, Ripple will partner with Amazon Web Services. Codius is not dead. Is The question here is, is Flare what Codius was? And three, Ripple's cross-border pay, payments, Ripple's cross-border payments is not the target. The derivative market is. And then four, one XRP will be worth more than one ounce of gold. There you go. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you guys this. I'm not going to play the video, but this is one example. Um, Link2 is doing these conferences where you can go in and you, they do investment conferences for digital to talk about digital assets as well as blockchain private equity investments. And you can go and register. If you go to at L-I-N-Q-T-O Inc., that's their Twitter handle. You can also go to Link2.com which is the same spelling. 
Um, if you want to, I, I go in these investor conferences, uh, usually when they do them, they're pretty cool. Okay. Um, SBI VC trade, um, they are offering, we will provide a cool X wallet service free of charge to all customers who meet the conditions. So it looks like they're offering this as hard, um, this hard wallet as storage for free to their customers. That's pretty interesting. Ben Rickert, the most attractive free trading lie on the planet is the U.S. dollar. We print a lie, a dream on a piece of paper, and ship it to Brazil, and they send us coffee. We ship, we ship the same lie to Germany, and they send us Mercedes. As with all dreams, they end. You cannot print prosperity forever. He is a thousand percent correct. I thought this was interesting. Riz XRP, take a look at the state of cryptocurrency market on Coin360. This is, um, let's see this website. It's coin360.com. This is a an interesting visualization. Let me see if I can do a refresh and get an update on that. This is an interesting visualization of the crypto markets. We're seeing a lot of green today. Um, then uh, Lisa Joe Key sent me this. Gene Simmons is apparently in the crypto game, the, the guy from KISS. One to watch. Coley, he's talking about Catherine Coley, um, previously of Ripple, now the CEO of Binance US. Outstanding young CEO and going places. Keep your eyes on Gene Simmons because he's a genius and he's paying attention to crypto and owns XRP according to him. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that digital assets are about the solving the problems of the financial crisis. And it's always been about solving those problems. Thank you for listening.